Well, a good Saturday morning. Uh, we are broadcasting live from Mission Hills Nursery. Uh, this is Garden America. Just in case you're wondering, thank you for tuning in this morning. Along with uh, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, I'm Brian Maine. Lovely setting. Uh, things are just fantastic this morning in terms of the weather and in terms of uh, what we hope will be a, a great show live with a, a lot of uh, boy, a lot of plant material around us, Tiger. I'm going to turn my uh, my audio down on my laptop. <laughs> As uh, we get settled, again, John, Brian, Tiger, welcome to Mission Hills Nursery and this live uh, broadcast here on Garden America. Guys? Hey, so it's fun to be outside and in the garden, right, John? It is. Um, the so sun's coming up, so it's not as cold. This morning, I think it was, what, 32? You 33? know, it was freezing this morning when I woke up in my house, which I don't understand how it's colder in my house than it was outside that's called insulation <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah our house is freezing i i have to yeah. succumb to turn the heat on yeah because i mean the weather is actually not that bad i mean it drops down in the evenings uh -huh. but during the day it's nice right but for some reason my house dropped really <laughs> cold yeah you're right it's an old house i need better insulation yeah. right. but nonetheless it's funny when you wake up and it seems like it's colder in your home than it is outside Hey, shout out to Cottonwood, Diane. Oh, Thanks hey. Thanks for tuning in. Good morning. Thank yeah, you, thank Diane. You. And uh, Lenore, Gina in Le Meridian, Idaho. Yeah, Lenore, wow. Lenore's been very busy. She's been posting a lot of pictures of her garden. Thank you for posting so many wonderful pictures of what's happening out there. And uh, it's always fun to see um, what what people are into at the moment and what's going on. In my, in my house, I got all my freesias in bloom. I gotta take some pictures. You know, I noticed in front of the nursery here too. They had planted a lot of freesias. Yeah, yeah. I love freesias. I mean, they're super easy. They're kind of like the paper whites where they just come, you know, right up after, uh, you know, automatically by themselves. And you know what else is is just sprouting? What? My alliums. Oh, we'll see really? what happens. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You were inspired by our trip to England. Exactly. Exactly. To the Hampton Court Flower Show. The, I never saw so many. The tips are starting to burn a little bit already really? so i don't know what that now, means did you um refrigerate them or no i did you i did, did refrigerate them yeah okay yeah so hopefully you know we'll see what happens this year and i'll get some cool alliums popping up and we should remind people if you're tuning in for the first time uh, this is a mission hills nursery we are live uh, broadcasting from uh well your family owns this uh, this nursery tiger been yeah. in existence since 1910 not your family since 1910 <laughs> but uh, the the nursery's been here one of the oldest nurseries and john uh, this is, is this a kate sessions nursery from the very beginning yes yeah. yeah, she's the one who started this nursery Kate Sessions, also known as what, Tiger? The mother of Balboa Park. Right. I mean, such an influential influential figure here in San Diego in terms of landscaping. Um, you know, John knows a lot of history when it comes to, you know, horticultural in the area. Even though you moved from, what is Michigan, Midwest, East Coast? Um, what is Michigan is Midwest. Midwest, right. you know. You know, you, you, it's you, east, you love part studying. Of the Midwest, yeah. though, right? <laughs> You love studying the history around here, and, I mean, it's kind of neat to know what people have done in the area. I mean, you know, San Diego, we've got Ecky Farms. We've got Kate Sessions. Right. We have some of the largest uh, concentration of, you know, farms in the area. I think, doesn't San Diego County also produce the um, largest volume of, um, was it ornamental plants as right. well? Right, right. Yeah, so. And... At one time, before you were born, <laughs> the um, Encinitas area was where Eki is, right? Or was was is also used to be a large um, cut flower propagation area. Oh, really? Yeah, carnations. Okay. And roses before they went to Columbia. Okay. So big, what greenhouses or fields of roses? Greenhouses. Greenhouses yeah. of roses. Yeah. Same thing with the carnation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brian always wanted to grow carnations. Well, well, you know, Car yeah. remember you got him some some cut flower carnations. Carnations went out of vogue years ago. They used to be so common. Now all you can, and you can't even buy carnation ice cream anymore. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure if there's a correlation there. there. There's a conspiracy against them, right? Yeah. Hey, those that are watching us uh, live here, uh, John's in the shadows, but hopefully you you enough that you can see John. That's uh, that's what we want to make sure that uh, John Gaga doesn't get. Lady going to sing a song about me being in the shadows. Yeah, we don't want to make sure John doesn't get covered up by the shadows. Hey, I want to give a quick shout out to Kim at the Tucson Garden Club. Oh, she hey, found Kim. us this morning. Yeah, hey, Kim's always tuned in, and we'd love to hear from the Tucson Garden garden club every saturday so thank you for tuning yeah. in um and i want to just let everybody know that's uh, listening right now we're going to be talking a lot 
today about, you know, obviously what's happening here in the nursery, some plants. You know, John's picked out a, a beautiful selection of plants to put in front of our table here. Yep. Um, but at the same time, we, we do not have a guest lined up because we are doing the remote. Which means a lot of talking on our end. And, but that a means lot a of lot of a, a yes. opportunity to answer garden questions. So if you have something on your mind or you're wondering about something, go ahead and throw it right out there onto the uh, Facebook feed. And we will definitely be getting to all the questions today because we won't have a uh, guest lined up that, you know, allows us to kind of get into deeper detail about what everybody has going on in their garden. Right, and if you see a plant or something around us and you want to know what it is, again, post that question and we'll let you know because we are surrounded. Too, <laughs> too bad there's not a 360 camera, I know, uh, Tiger huh? and I'll, John. I'll have to take the camera and kind of move it around at one point in time to show everybody where we're at because we're actually in the back of the nursery. Right. Um, so we're kind of in this area where it's like we're just completely surrounded by plants. Um, to my left over here, we have all of our kind of cactus and succulents. To the side where John's are at on my right, this is more of like our Australian natives, our Mediterranean plants. And then behind us, that banner isn't really well lit, but that's our California native table where all of our uh, California native plants that we get from Musa Creek and other uh, A growers. great selection, too. You, you know, know you're supposed to plant California natives in the fall, but right. this is the time of year when they're all blooming. <laughs> and you can see what they're going to look like. So I'm really more motivated to plant natives this time of year. And the only is, thing you have to watch out for is the water, right? That you, you don't you, overwater you, them going into the summer. Go, You know, I mean, you and I both have made that mistake a number right. of times where it's summer. We see our, our California lilac. We see our manzanita, and we're like, it's it's dry, it's hot, it needs water, and then we kill it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And anytime Tiger or John says to their left or right, that is the opposite when you're watching us on Facebook Live. Right, so I gotta yeah. redirect. <laughs> but again, uh, questions, comments, post them right there on our Facebook page. And again, we do want to shout out to our listeners on Biz Talk Radio listening to this broadcast. Uh, actually, uh, well, this this show was last week for those of you listening on Biz Talk Radio. But again, a reminder, as we mentioned every week, that if you want to watch the show live, uh, just go to our Facebook page, Garden America Radio Show. You can watch us live. 8.06 is when we kick things off on the West Coast, and the Eastern Time Zone is 11.06. But a big thanks, a big shout out to the network for keeping us on the air nationally on Biz Talk Radio. Wow. We have, a, we have a lot of comments. I, I'm watching Brian's feed over here, and there's zero comments. But there's actually 22 comments happening and a little bit of chatter going on to a Facebook at the moment. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, mentioning the people as they join us, but there's just too many. Yeah. and yeah. Um, do want to say hi to Tanya up in uh, San Jose, though. Oh, hey, Tanya. Um, Only because do we, we want to have how to pronounce her name. John, do the quote of the week before yeah, let's, break? Yeah, let's do with the quote of the week. We've got uh, just a couple of minutes before the first break for our friends on BizTalk Radio. John's got a great quote. Wait. <laughs> John's got a great quote this week. Yes, Elmer. <laughs> hey, um, I picked it because this nursery was started by Kate Sessions. Yes. So I thought a quote from Kate would be apropos for today. And she said, I'm exasperated when I see good, thrifty trees being ruined for lack of thoughtful care. A little judicious pruning would make every crooked tree along the waterfront respectable. Makes me downright rebellious when I see good trees growing crooked when they could be so fine. <laughs> that, that's not a quote. That's an excerpt from a book. It, it does remind us that... Um, this is also a good time for pruning trees before right. they leaf out. You can see the branching structure, depending on what kind of trees they are, though. If it's a, a fruit tree, you don't want to prune now because you're going to be cutting off fruit. Right. Uh, and if it's a shade tree that flowers, you might want to prune it after flowering so you don't lose the flowers. Lose as many flowers. Right. I know, and so many trees here in San Diego are already butted out. I mean, you know, at the uh, on the social media for the nursery last week uh, we posted a picture of our um alexandria magnolia the the you know the tulip magnolias right. the ones that are more pink or red the Solangiana, and Solangiana, they go right. dormant and i mean it's still the end of february right that yeah. should be very dormant and that's in almost like full bloom right now it's pretty amazing i was on a property the other day and all of their um Aristocat pears were in blue. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. So. Yeah, I want to mention what a great uh, weather forecaster John is. Last Saturday, we talked about how hot it was in San Diego and, you know, summertime temperatures. And John said, well, on Tuesday, it's going to rain. It'll be 61 degrees. And then from then on, it'll pick back up again with the heat. And that is exactly, exactly what happened. Did you get rain in San Diego during the day? Yes. 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 Because we hail at night. Oh. Yeah, there was hail, too, in a lot of areas. We had almost no rain, just a little mist. Really? Until evening. And then we had a cloudburst that was... Like within, uh, I would say, 15 minutes, about a quarter to half inch of rain. Wow. Hey, we're going to take our first break. It's going to be a quick break uh, for those of you on Facebook Live. This is a break for our friends on BizTalk Radio and our many fine sponsors nationally. So hang in there. Again, questions, comments. Garden America, we are broadcasting live this morning from Mission Hills Nursery, located right here in beautiful San Diego, California. Again, quick break on BizTalk Radio. Back after these messages for our national friends here and the network on BizTalk Radio. Stay with us. Linda says that her hellebores are beautiful. I want to mention quickly that, you know, if you've got pictures. And just like that, for our friends here on uh, Facebook Live, Biz Talk Radio, we are back broadcasting live. Always fun to get out of the studio and put ourselves into a, a bit of a different environment, and especially being outside. Uh, wish you could all share this with us. It is beautiful. Sun is shining uh, around all this, this beautiful horticultural foliage, as, as I like to say. And just, uh, just a historical. Birds are chirping. Birds are chirping. And from a historical landmark here in San Diego, Mission Hills Nursery established way back in 1910. Hey, I, before John, I know John has something he wants to mention, but um, there is a comment out there, and there's probably not a lot of people that know him better than his own family, and his daughter, being one of them, said we should start placing bets on how many plants he's going to be taking home today. And I will say, I think I think Dave commented on something about being um, a 10 and he, I think you've pulled two so far. <laughs> I do have two so far. And uh, and Dave, by the way, is my brother on Facebook. And uh, Gina said, my daughter said, should we take bets on how many plants I'm going to take yeah. home? And well, you know, it's funny. John brings a few plants when he arrives. And then, <laughs> and then so when he leaves, you don't know what he brought or what he's taking. Well, Dave says the over-under is 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> subterfuge. One. John is good at subterfuge. Yeah. So, right, any, do you have any questions? Uh, what yes. do we, what well, do we I got going I wanted to mention uh, Linda up in Northern California says that her hellebores are beautiful. Um, hellebores, also known as, um, well, there's di there's a couple different species. There's Orientalis, which are, I think is referred to as the Lenten rose, and there's Helleborus niger, which is the Christmas rose. But the ones that are so popular this time of year are the uh, Orientalis hybrids. And she says hers are looking good. So, you know, that's a, a good shade perennial for people who are looking for winter color. Um, there's not a lot of things that do bloom in the winter, but in front of us we have azaleas, which are starting to come into bloom, and a great time of year to be buying camellias. Yep. The, ca the camellia japonicas are coming into full bloom. And probably the best time to go to Nucio's Nursery up oh, in Altadena. Man. What that must look like right now. Yeah, they've got the largest selection in the world, uh, certainly the United States, if not the world. They have many varieties named after them. <laughs> well, the, those are varieties they've hybridized right. themselves, yeah. yeah. Um, hey, so I bought a plane ticket. Yeah. We're going to, uh, you know, my daughter lives in Meridian, Idaho, just outside of Boise, and uh, we've been a visitor twice now in uh, early winter. <laughs> and it's been freezing up there. Yeah. It, now you're going to go when it's warm? Well, kind of a joke has been, you know, between us is we always make a comment like, they say this place is beautiful in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to go mid-May. Nice. We got uh, got good tickets. And, uh, and, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because you, you heard about the, the trip that we had to abort going to Cheyenne back in December yeah. Yeah. because of the weather. We're going to do the same thing around maybe May, early June, but we're going to fly this time. Oh, really? easier. E even though the weather's going to be nice, we're just going to get there and get back. Well, in for action. Cheyenne, you don't want to wait till July when the snow melts. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I just talked to my son the other day, and he was uh, basking under about five feet of snow. Oh, my uh, gosh. Yeah. 
He that loves it, amazing. though. They love it there. So, yeah, same thing, John. So ha have fun, and you'll finally be able to see what Boise really looks like, <laughs> how beautiful it is. Um, we got a question from Dale. Uh, we'll get start getting to a few of these questions here. Uh, what to do to the soil after tilling it to prepare it? So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that people say to do. But yeah, I mean, one of the first things some people say to do is don't till it. Yeah, that yeah, is true. That right? would be John. Well, no, I mean, no, no, no. There's a lot of yeah, because you got to get rid of weeds and things. Yeah. And yeah, and if you do till it and you leave the weeds in the soil, you know they add um, food, for, nitrogen, right, and yeah. you know organic material to it. But again, back to kind of almost where Brian was saying, don't till it, or, or John was. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of not really doing all that work or really adding a ton to it. If you have pretty good soil to start with, then it's just a matter of recharging it. So that's just introducing an organic fertilizer and then a product like John and Bob's Soil Optimizer or the Natural Guard Humate product. Um, those Soil Optimizer Humate products are basically concentrated compost in almost like a granular form that you can drop in your soil. And they'll do the same thing as if you introduced compost into the soil. But um, it's much easier to do. Yeah, there are organic enzymes that get the whole uh, uh, biodegrading process to begin. Yeah. That's what you need to get started. So if you're not looking to add any volume or needing to introduce loamy material, then um, the Natural Guard Humate product is really good to use and then just an organic fertilizer. Um, so, you know, wanted to make sure we answered that question for sure. Yeah. Um, then there was, uh, what else? Uh, Gina mentioned that she couldn't help herself yesterday. It was 50 degrees in Idaho. Oh, they had a heat wave. <laughs> yeah. And that happens occasionally, but she went and pruned back all her perennials and she wonders if that's going to be a problem if they get another frost, which even though we don't live there, we can pretty much guarantee you will have a lot more frosts and freezes. But for perennials, uh, this time of year in cold areas, it's just cleaning them up. Even in warmer areas, you can go through and cut them back to get all the all the um, dead blooms and things that were left over from last year. And they'll come up and grow. It, it doesn't affect them. It's not going to hurt them. Yeah. Um, and? Rick wants to know if there's any monarch butterflies around the nursery. And I, I don't Saw know if a it's too early for yeah. monarchs, but, yeah, there's been Lots of hummingbirds, hummingbirds right. everywhere yeah. Yeah. on the kangaroo. Hey, where, where are your... Uh, Chickens and roosters. Where, where the are chickens they? are still in the coop. Their coop is right back okay. over over there. They're still in the coop. I mean, if they were here, they'd be jumping on the table and trying right. to get on the shot. They're very they're very needy well, gals. They're, they're not scheduled till next hour, right? <laughs> exactly. Any, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I bought a new book. I brought it in to show you, Tiger, because we were talking. It was either last week or it might have been uh, the week before when we had joe o'connell uh -huh. from australian native plant nurseries yeah the week before and i was mentioning how much i liked hakeas and, oh yeah and i think your comment was what is a hakea <laughs> exactly <laughs> but look at this book it, oh wow it's just called hakeas a field guide <laughs> a field guide yeah, to hakeas. Who, one one variety of plant and there's a whole large volume field guide well, especially it. if it's a plant you've never heard of yeah. and the, hey best of all lots of pictures yeah. yeah, there are a lot of pictures. <laughs> Makes but it, it easy. It's kind of inspired me that I don't know where to get those acheas. So I think I might have to find a seed source and grow them from seed because there's a lot of varieties in there that I would like to have on a, on a hill by my house. It's another one of those plants, like California natives, that likes to be dry during the summer. I guess depending on where they, what, what part of Australia they come from. Now, is that umbrella to the right of John doing anything for us? Except it's, keeping John kind of in the shadows? I think it's John. It's doing something for John. Okay. Yeah. Because he's a bit shadowy, but then that's he's kind of a shadowy character. All right. Um, what do we have for your question-wise and comments? Okay. Well, we I did get props to the Pelafox uh, family yes. from Art. Nice. Yeah. Um, what's the name of the nursery with the hellbores? Need shade-tolerant perennials. Are there other recommendations? Uh. Well, uh, do you remember the name and of the nursery you mentioned? 
Now, I didn't mention a nursery for hellebores. We mentioned camellias. that, right, Nucios. Which was Nucios. Yeah. Okay, right. hey, we're going to jump in here and do a break for our friends on uh, BizTalk Radio for the network. Uh, those on uh, Facebook Live, keep those questions, comments coming. Again, uh, Garden America on a beautiful Saturday morning here in San Diego, California, broadcasting live from Mission Hills Nursery. I'm Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco, taking a break for BizTalk Radio. Back after these messages, do stay with us wherever you are. Carla wants to. Okay, we are back from that very quick break. Uh, those on BizTalk Radio, this is last week's show. Uh, we're sorry that you can't see the, the, the lovely environment that we're in today. But uh, as we mentioned, to go to our Facebook page, Garden America Radio Show, and you can watch us live every week. Most of the time in the studio. Today, though, broadcasting live from the historic Mission Hills Nursery here in San Diego. Great to have you along, guys. I wanted to mention, uh, even though I, I did not mention a hellebore nursery, if you Google just buy hellebores, you'll find a lot of mail order places and you can find um, uh, specific varieties. And I, I can't think of the name now. I, I, for some reason, I think it was Knox, K N O X. Uh, there's a nursery back east, it might have been Tennessee or somewhere, that was the first nursery to put out the double flowering Ooh, hellebores. And, uh, and I bought some years ago and planted them in the shade and they did really well so if you just google buy hellebores you'll come up with a lot of options it's funny because you know we we've been in the industry for a, a long time and you know we've gone around interviewing people different ways different things and this week i sent john a picture of a a flower um that i got, saw on social media from it had to be either i think it was japan but um, it was a looked like a pansy, but it was a a ball pansy that looked like a hydrangea almost. It was yeah, it was <laughs> out of this world. Two questions came to mind when I saw that picture, <laughs> and the first one was, "What is this?" Yeah, <laughs> and the second it was, "Why don't I have one?" <laughs> right, <laughs> and 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 so you know we're talking about these plants, and you you have to realize like wherever you are in the world, there's there's all kinds of unique varieties that are actually kind of just regional to you that. Other places don't know, so we love to see pictures. So if you're you're listening and you have fun plants, you know we we'd love to see pictures. Please post them on our social media. We love to share them in our newsletter with people. Yeah. Um, you know, so right. go to the website, yeah. log on, put your email address in there for the newsletter because part of the process of our show is just the community that we have where we can share the knowledge and what other people have. Right. Yeah, Linda and Redding, if you've got pictures of your hellebore, just email me to john at gardenamerica.com we'll put it in the newsletter yeah and if you do get the newsletter you'll see at the bottom of the newsletter every week uh, the various pictures that uh, people send in and every now and then john posts uh, things that are growing in our garden tiger myself uh, and of course john included so uh, yeah, do you that you had your lemon spice rose you know what a surprise yep. i forgot that i sent you that picture that i uh, i opened up the newsletter and i said well this is nice whose is this oh it's mine lemon and spice get, from you john you get 15 points every time <laughs> one of your pictures posted and if you get 10,000 points overall, you, I can get redeem a, it? you get a free trip. Nice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I know the kind of free trip you're talking about, Oh, John. look at Michelle, so uh, thank you. the manager here at the nursery, is bringing down some, are these some hellebores, hellebores that you have? Oh, oh wow. wow. Look at that. Look at these ones. Ask and you shall receive. Yeah. So this one's a um, double Picatee. What do you got there, John? Anna's uh, it's Red. It's called Anna's Red. Ooh, that's a pretty flower. Yeah, well, I like the foliage, too. The foliage is uh, is darker and a little bit variegated. Can you? Um, I don't know yeah, if you I'm can in on zoom it. zoom in on the flower. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of oh, that's uh, yeah. But the foliage is fun too, right? right? And for shade, you know, it's tough to get shade flowers, as you mentioned before. But um, you know, these are definitely ones that you know will add to a landscape and fill in nicely. There, <clears throat> one of the negatives about most hellebores <laughs> is that the flowers are always facing down <laughs> but they're yeah, i'm trying to think of the variety maybe you, you remember, remember the, there's a new one where the flower faces come, up right? yeah exactly i can't remember the name but um yeah i remember you talked about that before 
and how you always wanted to put it up high, so right. you're looking up at it. Right. But yeah, there are some varieties that do they do uh, have that actually have um, you know the, the I think it's almost like an equal or upward facing flower. Well, you know that I like uh, the old fashioned tea roses, the roses from oh probably the the uh, 18th century, 19th <coughs> century, but. All tea roses have their flowers facing downward. And so I have a collection of them at home, and I'm going to end up putting them on my hillside so that as you're walking down below, looking <laughs> up, you can see you the can flowers. See Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, good, good landscape design strategy. Um, speaking of landscape design, if anybody – is uh, works at the Huntington up in Los Angeles or has good connections. I'm going to be up there tomorrow to tour the gardens and take a look around. But one of the plants, because I've been following them on social media, that people have been posting a bit of is their paintbrush lilies are coming into bloom and, or <clears throat> coming up. And so are mine, the uh -huh. one that you give me. Right. You know how many I have now? You, you gave me one. Right. Okay. And that was, I think, three years ago. I think I think you're right. Yeah. Right around then. I have five coming up now. Five blooms? Five different yeah. ones coming wow. up. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah. So they and those look so cool coming up because they're kinda like alien esque where it's green and red and it's speckled. A lot of fun. Right. The if someone is looking for that plant, it's a Skadoxus. <laughs> S C A D O X U S. And they're related to Hamanthus. But the difference is that Hamanthus only have two leaves that point in opposite directions, where Skadoxus, uh, after the blooms, they come up with a whirl of leaves. They look kind of tropical, I think. Yeah. The, yeah. the leaves <clears throat> themselves. Definitely tropical. And then I've got to take a picture of another one that you, because I've been going crazy with my new labeling machine. Oh, yeah. Um, How's that coming? Good. I've, I'm, I've almost got my whole collection properly labeled, except... I, saw I, I didn't Isaac want to had a tag on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to remember who he is. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to admit it to John, but um, I've been doing my own research. He gave me with that paintbrush lily. I think you gave me a um, a, a green plant, grass like, um, formium like uh, kind of a <laughs> structure. But I know it has a red spiked blossom that comes out of it, and um, I forget the name of it. And so I need to take a picture of it and send it to you, see if that jots your memory, because I, I need to put a label on that one as well. It's it's, it's about five plant, feet tall, right? though. Yeah. It's about the, the, the foliage, it hasn't bloomed. It, it, the, the foliage itself is about five feet tall now. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's probably getting to the size where it will bloom. And uh, it's not coming to me right now, but I think I know what you're talking about because I killed mine. <laughs> <laughs> will that reproduce? Will that, because it's only one plant. So that one is just an individual plant. Now, John, quickly, you, is there a difference between killing something or allowing it to die? <laughs> yeah, there's a big difference. So, so hostility uh, makes me think that you purposely killed it. No, okay. I never kill anything on purpose. It but just, I do allow some things to die. Okay. So it's a, it's succumbed to the pressures of the environment. Yeah, usually I. <laughs> I mean, even if I see weeds, I usually pull them out and give them to you. Yes. <laughs> that is true. I can right? show you about three or four plants at home that were John's weeds. Yeah. Right. Yesterday, I was pruning back my roses in containers, and I was I had to pull out a Washingtonia that was a foot tall that had seeded in one of the containers. <laughs> well. So, you know, I'm pulling out fan palms, tomato plants, uh, all kinds of things. We had a... A question from John I was trying to find. Did you see that, Tiger? Um, the Yes, from John. He, oh, okay. We, yeah. we did answer his question. Yeah, we he answered that He was asking one. about other shade plants. Right. And, and we had mentioned camellias and azaleas. Um, surprisingly well, uh, even out in Fallbrook, is the side of uh, our guest house my oldest son had planted cyclamen and they're coming up now for the second year and they're mixed in with the camellias and they're spectacular it's just you know you wouldn't 
Cyclamen are one of those plants that lo always look to me like a gift plant and like yep. it'd be hard to take care of. And they're only hard to take care of if you put them indoors. <laughs> if you plant them outside where in the shade, they'll come up every year. And they love, I mean, they don't love the, love the cold, but they're very cold tolerant. And people don't think about that because, like you said, people always get them as gifts. Right. So they think they can't put them outside. Right. But they would, like you say, they would actually do better for people. Well, they're so cold tolerant that um, when we went to the the Julian Alps in Slovenia with uh, Sharon and Bruce Asakawa years ago, there were there were um, native cyclamen that we saw in bloom. And what was unique about them. They were smaller, of course, because the ones we sell as gift plants are hybridized. But what was unique to me was the strong fragrance. I mean, really strong. Really, yeah. Cyclamen are kind of like camellias. You never expect them to be fragrant. But there's some camellias that are so fragrant, they're strong as the hyacinth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of neat when you see that. Because, cause like you say, we get accustomed to certain plants because of where we live or how they're given to us. And so, you know, it's it's interesting when you see them native or, you know, varieties that you aren't familiar with. And you're like, oh, I didn't know these ones can have a scent or, you know, I didn't know these ones come in yellow or right. whatever. Hey, it is break time real quick. Got to step in here for our friends on BizTalk Radio. And again, those on uh, Facebook Live, just keep those questions, comments coming as we continue our broadcast this morning. On this Saturday morning from Mission Hills Nursery, Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tyler Palaf Tiger Palafox, I should say. Quick break for BizTalk Radio. Back after these messages. Do stay with us. All right, we are back. Uh, those on BizTalk Radio, this is uh, the final segment of your hour, hour number one. And, of course, uh, you've got news and uh, other things happening top of the hour, six minutes after we are back. And hopefully uh, you carry our show both hours or at least uh, one of the two hours on BizTalk Radio across the country. Back here on Facebook Live, we are broadcasting from Mission Hills Nursery. And, again, uh, great to be outside. Uh, the sun is shining, not a cloud in the sky. And uh, just to be surrounded in this environment is something special. And, again, I think after this morning we can talk about doing more of these guys because we made it work. <laughs> a little bit of trouble in the beginning, but we got it, right? But Tiger got here bright and early. Hey, you know what? I've done remotes for, for years and years, decades in radio. There's always something, <laughs> always something. The key is is to get there early yeah. uh, so you have time to take care and alleviate any possible problems. <laughs> Tiger, Kim in Tucson wants to know um, about the nursery. What makes it? Um, historic historic and she wants to know is is it just the length of the time yeah. that it's been here because it is the oldest one in san diego right uh the fact that it was started by kate sessions somebody who's fairly famous yes yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well especially in san diego sure. and also for being a woman that time of year huge that she was doing things that women at that time just did not do correct yeah and, you know, I think another aspect of it is just the community it's in. So Mission Hills is a community situated above Old Town. Um, for those of you people familiar with San Diego, we're near the airport, downtown San Diego, Old Town. We're in a community up above it, which was established by, you know, a, a, a large number of individuals that wanted a community. I mean, you know, right next to Mission Hills is Bankers Hill, which was an affluent community, you know, kind of a thing. And, um because we've been a if, if you come to the nursery the shocking thing about it is that you have to drive here specifically to come here meaning we're yeah, not, you're not going to pass it just yeah. because you're going someplace else you know we're not freeway visible no. we're not you know sitting on 20 acres of growing ground you know here's and, an analogy for those that that are familiar with uh, the midwest back east in baseball it's like an old baseball park that plopped yeah. right down in the middle of a neighborhood. Yeah. Where you have like Fenway yeah. Park or yeah. Comiskey Park. You have houses on either Not side Comiskey and Park, boom, yeah. there's a, there's Wrigley the ballpark. Field. And well, here's the nursery right in the right in the middle of a quiet neighborhood. But right. when Kate put it here, there was it was nothing. on the outskirts, nothing. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, this was farmland. Yeah, exactly. So so I think that makes it um, pretty historic as well just being in the community here. Um, so, you know, there's a there's a lot of, of different reasons, but I think the other last thing and i think the thing that we've tried to do as a family to kind of keep this um part of the history of the nursery is that we specialize in the unique plants so we really yeah. try hard on going out and finding unique stuff different stuff 
So that way, you know, when you come to the nursery, you might not find 20 of one plant that you need, but you're going to find 20 different plants that make your garden really neat or interesting. And maybe a bit different from your neighbor. Yes, exactly. So You know that lion's tail in front of us, uh, which is called lion's tail because the flower looks like a lion's tail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's, uh, they can get pretty big and a little rangy. But this one is a compact variety with a uh, extra large flower. And that may be in my house <laughs> <laughs> in a few hours. Yeah. But I really like that. And they come up from seed. I don't know about this variety, but I, I know that I gave you a giant one a few years ago, yep. which did come up from seed. And, and I lost all those. So I might have to I'd, find another one. This one we have planted on a few properties that we actually manage. Uh-huh. And I don't know if it comes up from seed, but it does come up. Like, it's weird how it comes up again. So it must be from seed. Right. Because it comes up in, in, it almost looks like it'd have, like, runners. Uh-huh. But it must be from seed then. Yeah. I would say so, because, first of all, a spontaneous generation has been <laughs> disproved years ago. <laughs> and I've never seen them. I've seen them bush out but i've never seen them come up from runners okay yeah so i mean it's it's so it it must be from seed does come up from seed yeah uh same variety is it are yep. the ones that come up compact like that yeah yeah we planted these ones specifically in a, a commercial property because the designer planned for regular kangaroo paw or lion's tail uh-huh. and they were just so difficult to maintain and manage in this spot uh-huh. so we found this variety and switched it over to that one Hey, Tiger, I got a question as I look around, because we always talk about how many plants and roses John has, and just yeah. thousands. Okay, well, there's thousands of plants around us right now. Right. How many people are in charge of taking care, watering, and maintaining so that, you know, when a potential customer comes here, it looks good? What's that all about? How does that happen? So we have on staff, just to maintain the plants, about f- people. Yeah. <laughs> about five people okay. that work, you know, five days a week that are just maintaining the plants, watering, fertilizing, trimming, weeding, all of that. Then we have other staff that is kind of merchandising mm-hmm. and putting away and labeling, but just on the maintenance end. And it's, you know, we're open seven days a week for eight hours a day. And so they're here working that the nursery, doing that that kind of work all that time. I mean, you look around, you think, oh, yeah, you know, I've been to nurseries before. Things look good, but it doesn't just happen. No. And that's a lot of time and care that goes into it to make it look good. I think that's one thing people that know plants appreciate about a nursery is that it's not walking into a T-shirt shop or, a, you know, even a grocery store where you put stuff on a shelf and you just wait for it to be sold. Right. I mean, you, you don't have to take care. You don't have to water a T-shirt. Yeah, we're we're more like a pet store where yeah. you know we have to feed, we have <laughs> yeah. to walk, That's a good way of putting it. You know, yeah. and 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 all of these are alive. And if some one of our you know staff members you know forgets to do something or doesn't do something well, it, it like you say, it can kill it. And right. So um, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it, and, and we want people coming in here and kind of getting inspired. So we try to move things around and do things differently as much as possible to to make sure that they see something that maybe they didn't spot before. I noticed uh, looking at the house plants earlier that there's a great selection. Yeah. And within the house plants, you have them kind of grouped into categories. <laughs> and within the categories is a great selection. Yeah. Um, much, I think, much more so than the house plant craze of the 70s. <laughs> I think that I'll be, um, maybe our next remote will be in the greenhouse. Because I think we house did plants one. are you such a hot yeah. topic. Yeah, we did one we with did our one. phone. Which, it was just the phone we had. We had sort of a primitive setup, but it yeah. worked, and that was a few years ago. But, um, and hey, we can, uh, again, a lot of ideas for taking this show on the road now that we know we can do it outside. Yeah. Hey, our buddy Jimmy in Oceanside wants to know about if we're going to be mail ordering a limited variety of tomatoes, grafted tomatoes this year. Okay. And we are not as Garden America, but I don't don't know. Are you growing any this year? I will be doing some. And I think last year I posted the varieties as well. And if somebody wanted some. um, How do they get hold of you? Yeah. So real quick, because we're going to take a break. Tiger, go ahead. Okay. I'll post um, my email on the Facebook feed, and then they can just send me an email 
um, that they're interested in the tomatoes, and then I'll send them the variety. Okay, quick break. For those on Biz Talk Radio, news coming up top of the hour. We are back at six minutes after. Hopefully your market carries us. In the meantime, a quicker break for those on Facebook Live as we continue. Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, broadcasting live from Mission Hills Nursery here in beautiful San Diego, California. Back after the news and these messages on Biz Talk Radio. Okay, we kick off our number two for those on BizTalk Radio. Facebook Live, it's just one long continuous show. And a lot of fun having you along this morning as you can watch us. You can see where we are, Mission Hills Nursery, and the beautiful plant material around us as we continue. Hopefully you had a good week, and we appreciate you spending part of your weekend with us. For many people, they start off the weekend uh, with us here on Garden America. And I know some people, including myself, a three-day weekend with the President's Day holiday coming up on Monday. So thank you for tuning in, and thank you uh, for those on uh, BizTalk Radio, Stephanie, and the rest of the network keeping us on the air. Hey, uh, Rick in Idaho wants to know if the price of houseplants has gone way up. And my last trip to Idaho, yeah. I came home with about... I think about 10 house plants <laughs> and they were much more expensive than I recall and but it wasn't everything they're more more newer varieties yeah I was gonna say you also buying them I think in Idaho makes them expensive because they have to keep them in a greenhouse right, right. and I don't think they have local suppliers right well didn't you tell me that the plants that i bought yeah you were able to find that nursery yeah and bring those in also and that nursery is in california oh so i mean yeah i don't but think they're they still have... more expensive than your normal ones aren't they yes yeah, yeah. The, uh, unique varieties like you're saying right um so yeah i think that you know the price has gone up a bit but if you're looking at your boston fern ivy pothos those maybe have gone up a little bit but not um huge amounts but i think that people see these unique varieties and that's where the price went. i was going to say supply and demand the, yeah. the, the plants that you just mentioned are more common the harder to find plants i would imagine john tiger going to be a little more expensive oh i was just looking at i think it's uh brad's buds and blooms was selling the pink princess philodendron for the lowest price that i've seen on the internet in a long time and i believe it's two hundred dollars for a four inch pot wow Jeez. So much for my idea of getting back into that with the, yeah. sp the split fern, right? Or that's different. You mean the uh, Boston fern? No, no, I'm talking no. about the, the, the philodendron. Split leaf philodendron. Oh, split yeah, leaf split philodendron. Leaf. Those are actually kind of easy to come by nowadays. The split leaf one? Yeah. yeah. The variegated ones? Not the variegated oh, No, no, no. Yeah, he, yeah. he just mentioned the split leaf, and those those actually are a little easier to come by. So. Do you have any here? Um, probably, yeah. The, look around before I leave. <laughs> those grow in Southern California. Is uh, They're great shade plants. Yep. And they'll set fruit. Yeah. And the fruit tastes really good. Deliciosa. The, right. That's <laughs> the species is Monstera deliciosa. Yeah. Um, however, the fruit does have oxalic acid crystals <laughs> in it. So when the fruit's ripe, you have to make sure that you pull those out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, otherwise Gotta be careful. They, they burn your tongue. <laughs> they come but, with instructions, yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not fun. Not like Pop Rocks. <laughs> yeah, they... The flower on a monstera is uh, similar to flowers in that philodendron family, uh, which includes caladiums and yeah, and uh, not like as calla lilies and things like that. So you you'll be a, a spathe and a spadix. Yeah, but it's the 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 coloration is not as striking. No, no, it's um, not grown for the flower. But the shape is exactly the right. same. Yeah, exactly. How are we doing on questions, guys? Uh, we have a lot of people tuned in this morning, so we do appreciate that. You know, um, Jimmy mentions the Pequino tomato that we used yeah. to sell, that's and we don't have any more. Mm -hmm. in the, the, that's a protected variety in Sicily, if I recall, that they don't allow out of the country. But years ago, uh, a listener to the show had brought some seeds back with her and shared them with us, and we were actually able to get several crops out uh, to the right. country. And it's one of those tomatoes that even if it's not grafted, uh, lasts for years in great flavor. Yeah. 
So yeah, the so now's the time you're in in um, Tomato Mania. The event that we talk about coming up is going to be here at the nursery coming up in another two weeks. So a oh, lot wow. of varieties of wow. tomato. Something you know, if you're looking for a tomato plant, you know they have large tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, yellow tomatoes, green tomatoes, orange tomatoes, any tomato that you want or desire, they have it. Do you okay. know what the tomato of the year is? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll find out, though. Okay. Okay, so, so Tiger, one month from now, how different will this nursery look, if any at all, as we get into be spring? be completely bare. Every plant will Every be plant sold gone. Out. <laughs> sold out. Yeah, he can, they, you can wish, right? Yeah, I mean, one month from now... The biggest difference yeah. is going to be all of the roses will be, you know, leafed out. Maybe even some mm -hmm. of them might be in bloom. And then up on the top where our annuals and perennials mm -hmm. are, it's going to be much fuller than what it is now. Um, because we're getting in stuff now, but I don't even think we have petunias yet, um, which is, again, that spring, summer flower. Um, so, you know, you'll see all of those coming up. Do you know where those roses are right now? You just yeah, right there. <laughs> behind us over your left over your left shoulder no no john's trunk oh yeah <laughs> no no there's no roses in my trunk <laughs> not anymore he took them out yeah and a um, boy i was just gonna say something and i forgot what it, oh i know what he was gonna say last year um and the year previous with covid there were a lot of shortages on plants yeah and are there still uh categories of plants that are short or I'm thinking mainly of citrus and avocado, which were almost impossible to find last year. So um, citrus and avocado are still difficult, but I don't think that has anything to do anymore with COVID. It more has to do with just production and growers. Uh, I mean, for Southern California, you've got Durlings, you've got Laverne, you have Clawson. You know, four winds. Uh -huh, is, is still only kind of they'll really just go down to like los angeles maybe right um and so you know when you have a large population of people with only three growers really doing it but the growers have been restricted on how they can grow things and stuff so it's it, i understand it but i think it's more of a production thing so we are still challenged when it comes to citrus not the fruit trees though like the apples and the pears and the plums and those those are kind of right back up to normal numbers where they've been able to satisfy people's needs um, by getting out larger volume. Um, but the citrus are still a difficult thing. But in terms of other plants, like house plants, perennials, annuals, no. The, the growers are all caught up, and there's no shortages on that. Soils, no shortages on soils either. So we can't, we can't keep using the COVID excuse very much longer, no. which a lot of people still like to do. Yeah. For, yeah, for exactly. whatever reason. Yep, exactly. So, but no, no, I think that you're still getting a lot of, um, uh, you know, cool plants right now. Um, let me see. Oh, I found the tomato mania tomato of the year. Yep. Was Jeanette. I've never heard of Jeanette. Let me see. Uh, it's it, kind of a striped, um, what's that called? Like um, when they're long, small tomatoes? Oh, the elongated cherries are, yeah. are sometimes referred to as julienne type. Yeah, tomato. julienne is what, yeah. Yeah. Right? Because of the way that they can be sliced. Yeah. That sounds to me like it's probably a newer variety. And you said it was Jeanette? Yeah. I'll try to post a link to it. You know, to, right in front of Brian, if you're watching us on Facebook, and you're in the San Diego area, it's worth making a trip here just to get this particular plant because it's so hard to find. And I don't believe it's available mail order. And it's the rice flower, which is a great filler cut flower, drought tolerant. Uh, the scientific name is ozothamnus. And Brian, you know in Greek that yes. thamnus means flower. Flower. And ozo is rice. Mm -hmm. So it's the rice flower <laughs> and it's called that because the buds look like little kernels of rice but it does last a long time as a cut flower and a drought tolerant plant uh I, you know i don't know if there's any in one gallon so it might be a five gallon going home with me today <laughs> but i haven't had one for a long time and it's one of the ones that i want to add back into my collection this is also a good time i think protea are just budding up um 
one of those definitely is going home with me today. And, you know, my brother and sister Tiger are in Florida right now, and, and my brother Dave sent me pictures of uh, all the orchids. I don't know if they were at an orchid nursery. Oh, yeah. Or what. And Florida's much different climate than yeah. here. It's oh, hot yeah. and humid. Yeah. So right. a lot of orchids will grow outdoors there that won't here. But one that does grow outdoors here are cymbidiums. Mm -hmm. And they're all coming into spike now. Yeah, I brought mine in a couple of weeks back. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, and beautiful. Beautiful. And <clears throat> the, it had one fully open. And now I've got another spike that's about to open as that one starts to. And like you say, they grow great yeah. just outside. Hey, um, we got to wrong. I'm sorry, we got to take a break real okay, quick here. When to I stay, get back. Don't, don't we'll lose find that. Out what, what, why Tiger was wrong when we get back. <laughs> yeah, don't lose that train of thought. Going to take a break. This is Garden America, Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, back after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. Okay, we are back from that uh, very short break on uh, Facebook Live, a bit longer on uh, BizTalk Radio. But thank you, those on BizTalk Radio, for tuning in and uh, helping us with uh, our sponsorship. That is always appreciated. Uh, those of you on Facebook Live, keep those questions, those comments coming. As you see, not in studio today, broadcasting from Mission Hills Nursery. This wouldn't be a bad place to do it every week. It's a, <laughs> it's a little more of a, of a setup, but uh, we are back in studio next week. So in the meantime, enjoy what you're seeing here at Mission Hills Nursery. Now, so you don't lose that train of thought, Tiger. Yeah, so I was wrong on the tomato of the year from Tomato Mania. It's Bronze Torch. It's, it is the same style I mentioned as far as that Julian kind of striped, orange, green, reddish colored tomato, but um, Bronze Torch is the name. So, Got it. Bronze Torch. And that, you know what? That is a good shot. I'm looking at the computer. That's a nice shot. <laughs> look at that. That's a lot better than the studio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot more to look at, right? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Kevin in Idaho mentions that a lot of the nurseries up there just shut down for the winter. Oh, yeah. And he said, but when spring comes, you know, they're all restocked. And they open up with a, a bang and a lot of hoopla, Brian. Bang and hoopla. And you really like hoopla. I know that. Absolutely. In <laughs> fact, I would put hoopla in front of the bang. Yeah. Hoopla and bang. There you go. So, yeah. Hoopla's I, a good thing. I follow a lot of nurseries on social media, and we have our own chat just to interact and see what people are doing and, you know, to wait to get any new ideas. And I, every year, get shocked because here we're open – 12 months out of the year, right. yeah. we, we don't close. There's no shutting down. No. There's no rest. Yeah, and which on one end is, is difficult, but at the same time, I feel it's easier for us because I can't imagine needing to get in truckloads, like semi-full truckloads right. of plants. To restock for the next and year. pottery yeah. and material and try to sell it all in three to four months. So, I mean, you know, my hats are off to the right. nurseries that go through winters and have to shut down for a period of time and then just completely, it's almost like they just open up a brand new store every year. I remember when we, uh, in spring, went to a nursery in Minneapolis and they were telling us how busy their springs were. And for the year, they were doing pretty close to the same volume that Southern California yep. nurseries were doing. But this one weekend, they were expecting to do over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars on each day, Saturday and Sunday. Wow! But it rained. Oh goodness! And because of the rain, they only did eighty thousand each day. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I can't. In California, no one would come out in the rain. No. no. And they said, Well, here you have thirteen weeks to plant, and rain or shine, if you don't get your plants, you're not going to get them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you know, my hats are off to the East Coast Midwest nurseries that do what they do. I mean, you, you're talking about you're going to be taking that trip. You you went to a nursery in Idaho in winter, and they right. were they had a good selection. 
Um, Because they were growers, too. Yeah. I think that was part of it. They grew their own But now, wait till you see what they have now, because they're going to have I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to seeing plants in bloom that we don't normally see down here. True. You know, we don't have uh, peonies, for one thing. Yep. But I'm not sure of the time of year. We may be a little bit early for peonies. We'll be there mid-May, and I think the peony festivals are toward the end of May. Oh. So maybe we'll get to see the first part of it. When is the last Peonies Festival you attended, John? <laughs> I've I never to been to a Peony Festival. Hmm. <laughs> I was the first for everything. I right? did see the Peony Fields in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska, but it was January, <laughs> and they were under 10 feet of snow, so it wasn't much to look at. Kevin also mentions in uh, Idaho that, you know, my daughter said that the temperature was 50 degrees yesterday, so... You know, she wanted to get out of the house and work in the garden. He said it's going to be 10 degrees next week. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to get in out of the house and work in the garden because right. it was 50. Right. She's like, I'm going to wear I'm going to wear a short sleeve shirt today. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dana's concerned and wants to make sure that um, you have your sunscreen on, Brian. No, good I, concern. I, I don't. And, uh-uh. and you know, I'm I'm a dermatologist delight. Uh, delight. About two or three times a year. Uh, hat down, sunglasses uh, in place, but yeah, a little exposure, and I should have brought the suntan. Look, you know, we got here; it was very cold, and now with the sun coming up, it's heating up. It's nice. Yeah, it's perfect. It's a uh, beautiful. This is one of the reasons I moved to Southern California. And and Tiger, you picked out a great location. Uh, what is it, a year and a half ago? We were situated someplace else, but this is much better, surrounded by all the plant material. It's yeah, nice. last time we were up closer to the front of the nursery, right. kind of street traffic and just general traffic. Uh, was so I thought being back here in the nursery was a little bit better. So, you know, live and learn every year. And like I say, next next time maybe in the greenhouse would be nice. We've um, got, we've I've been preparing an area for us to broadcast from at my house. So I'm one th- requirement, John: good Wi-Fi. Well, I don't know about good Wi-Fi. We do have Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. <laughs> we will need that. Otherwise, I think uh, John, it's going to be nice. Well, we've done it before. Yeah. Did we do it with the camera or the phone? last time the phone i think the phone so okay yeah it'll, it'll work it'll be nice but i have a, a good long cord a good, <laughs> anyway yeah. i'm thinking that uh mid Nothing April, like all the roses will be in bloom and it'll oh be nice a perfect time yeah to no see it'll that. be good and uh who's catering it by the way <laughs> i see the catering trucks out there pulling up as we we set up <laughs> we don't always cater to your demands brian how about a request um maybe all right, Veronica. Yes. My holiday avocado is covered with lots of buds. It is three foot. It's in a three foot by four foot clay pot. When do I fertilize? When do I fertilize, or do I need to worry about a late <clears throat> freeze? Um, Veronica, we kind of need to know a little bit of maybe where you are first. Spring Valley. She's oh. in Spring Valley of San Diego, I think. Okay. So, what do you think, John? Well. If I was Veronica, and I, you know, holiday avocados are smaller growing avocados, so right. they will adapt well to container culture. And if I was Veronica, I would go out and buy some a time release fertilizer like Osmocote, put it on now or even two weeks from now, and just forget it for the year. Yeah. You won't have to do anything else. Uh, it bothers me a little bit being in a clay pot. Because Spring Valley gets so hot in the yeah. summer that it'll, they dry out quickly. Mm-hmm. So you will have to maybe water a little bit more. Yeah. And, and then when you water more, I mean, Osmocote's a slow release, but that just means you, you lose some more fertilizer. So you might need to do a, a application again. But the buds right now, that's perfectly normal for the avocado, right? Yeah, depending I mean, on the variety, but yeah. yeah, all avocados are coming into bloom right now. I saw yeah. the ones you have here in the nursery are all yeah. budding up. And and a lot of people also need to know that when they are budded up or flowering, their foliage doesn't always look particularly well. Meaning, they, well, they it put, drops this time of year, so yeah. everybody wonders, you know, yeah. what's wrong with my avocado? All the leaves are falling off. Exactly. So it, that's completely normal as well. And and then being here in San Diego because we don't get rain and. You know, the foliage gets burnt and it doesn't look good. And people think, oh, it's sick or something's wrong with it. And they don't realize that that's just the normal cycle. So, right. Fertilize regular water. But that's a good size pot. I mean, a three foot by four foot terracotta pot. That's 
That's a large amount of roots that that avocado is going to be able to get. Oh, is that the size of the pot? I was That's thinking that was the size of the avocado. Is that what she? I don't know. I for some reason I don't have her. It's on my in a three by four foot clay pot. Yeah. Yeah, that's a huge pot. Yeah, she's not moving wow. that one. <laughs> that that's the size of Brian's bedroom. Yeah, <laughs> give or take, right? Hey, Gina it, said that they had tons of peonies in Idaho uh, around Mother's Day, so that's when we'll be there. So I can rest easy. I'll be able to see peonies. Nah, nice, perfect. I speaking of peonies, um, you know, we got to take a quick break. I lost track of the time. Well, which means more peonies, editing on my as part. As we come back, I want to talk about them. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, quick break here. Garden America broadcasting live from Mission Hills Nursery. Back after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. Okay, we are back from that uh, short break. Uh, Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live. Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. Boy, oh boy, look at us here broadcasting live at Mission Hills Nursery, the historic Mission Hills Nursery founded by Kate Sessions back in 1910. Here it is, 2022. And uh, it's, it's our pleasure, our privilege. Tiger, thank you and the family for having us out here. We want to make sure they get some credit. Uh, of course, you just kind of showed up and did this, and they said, what are you doing? Yeah. And I think you said none of your business, which I thought was a bit rude. Well, it was funny because we have a manager's meeting every week, and I remember earlier last week I mentioned to the manager, Michelle, who came into the shot right, earlier, right. hey, we're going to be doing a remote from the nursery on this day, FYI, and I just never thought. And then my parents send me a, a text message with the post from – our social media said, Hey, we're going to be live from Mission Jersey. Like, my mom was like, Oh, good thing we knew. Yeah, thanks, you for know, like, us. thanks for telling us. And yeah. I was like, Oh, sorry, I forgot. Well, I think I posted one on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. So, oh. I was, well, they, they learned about it before it happened. I think their response was, <laughs> Huh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Exactly. I, mean, I didn't even know if they're going to be here today. Just never know with my parents. Yeah, both of them. Oh, yeah. Your dad came I saw by. your dad. Gave me yeah. a high said five. said hi to him. Yeah. Exactly. And so. your mom was here earlier. Yeah, there's, I think they stand up at the front now. But, yeah, so. They um, don't sleep here anymore. No, that those <laughs> days are over. They're, it's funny when you go to a nursery that the people live there, huh? Yeah. I mean, I grew up with that. I grew up in the industry, so there's. Right up there five. to my left? Is that an old? No, no we <laughs> never lived here. But there's there's five nurseries in San Diego that I can tell you that when we I used to play with their sons or daughters and go to their nurseries, they lived there. And the nursery was their yard. And we used to run around. And wow. Niffings was one of those nurseries. Niffings was one of those nurseries out there in um, – on the way to Alpine also, right. um, it was Ferraris, Southland Growers. That was another one as well. Um, there was hunt, Hunters in Spring Valley. They used to live there, I think, too. And then Bill Tall, City Farmers. They, his house was right there in the back. You know, I called them last week oh, yeah? because I wanted to buy 50-pound bags of Biosol. Okay. And they said they're having a hard time getting it. Oh, no. They don't have any. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Did, Did you tell them any? you're a big Biosol guy? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a big a bio I'm a big biosol guy. What do you mean I can't? I thought you used to get it from Grangettos. No, I never got it from Grangettos. I got it from uh, uh, an irrigation place over by Ewing Hunter, over by uh, Engineer Road, near where KFMB, KFMB used to be. Yeah, um, right in that area. Oh. I can't think of the name of it right now, but they don't. They stopped. Was Hydroscape? It. Could have been. Was because now Hydroscape is a company called Site One, which is like a the biggest irrigation uh, company in the country where they have, you know, it's a national company. Anyway, they tell me they don't carry it anymore. If any yeah. of our listeners online know where to buy 50-pound bags in of, San Diego, let me know. <laughs> Biosol. Yeah. Let's see how quick a response we get. Yeah, <laughs> I need about 10 bags. And you want it delivered too, right, John? Yeah. No, I'll pick it up oh. <laughs> if I can get it. Yeah. it for my type of soil, it's especially good. So oh, yeah. I need that. It's good stuff for sure. And, it, you know, takes care of the soil, not just the plants. So it's good for that reason. 
Um, so what do we, uh, we we're caught up on all the questions, the comments. I, let me I think. double check. Let's make sure we don't want to miss anybody. No, we don't. And again, if we happen to miss you, just post it again. You can just jog our memory there. Um, we do have a post that says, you should go live from some beautiful backyards in San Diego, La Jolla area. I remember when the La Jolla Garden Club did a tour in my sister's backyard, of my sister's backyard, and they came by the bus load. I love seeing design of all you talk about. Um, that would be fun to do. Maybe this spring we can plan to do a remote from, uh, aside from John's property, but from another property. We just knock on somebody's door randomly yeah. and say, we Why need not? to set up in your backyard. We, th we flew a drone over your backyard. It's beautiful. And we'd <laughs> like to take advantage of that. Was it weird at all? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. The, um, you have a garden walk, yeah, a yearly garden walk here in Mission Hills, right? Mother's Day weekend every year, the Mission Hills Garden Club. Uh, yeah. So, no, I mean, that might be fun is if we can get Is that get something someone... you have to sign up for? Yes. And they have been, you know, since COVID, they've really restricted the ticket sales. Mm -hmm. And so it has been something that has sold out for the past two years. Um, this year, we'll see what they do with ticket sales again. But, um, you know, great opportunity to see in people's backyards. Yeah, unique, different, and you get a chance to do that because you do a lot of landscaping and things <laughs> yeah. like that, right? Yeah, I just go back to people's backyards all the time. Don't even let them know. No. <laughs> Who's that out there? It's Tiger. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's here for a reason. Yeah. Hey, you guys know that at times I have a uh, tendency to, to – uh, Obsess about minutia. <laughs> Obsess no. about minutia. I was just wondering. No. I, I saw a sign when I came in that said cactus and succulents. Uh huh. And I was wondering, should what? it be cacti and succulents? Because <laughs> it's one cactus, but many succulents. So you don't have just one cactus and a lot of succulents. It may be cactus and succulent, but Cac I think it should be cacti and succulents. Cacti to be correct. and succulent would be the correct sign or well, now know, now John, i think you've got a new job <laughs> for the nursery they have added um cactuses to the word or right to the into the dictionary, they dictionary. cactuses cactuses yep. they and added succulents it. And when are they going to change moose to, to mooses i don't know mice moose creek is the nursery right <laughs> you have one moose but you anyway see that, many moose. that just popped into my head that <laughs> i would probably if i was you tiger just ignore random stream it. of consciousness yeah, yeah, yeah. john's uh random stream i'm not of sure if this is correct but uh, as he looks around and finds grammatical errors around that adds to the the character john right <laughs> you guys are winning a contest right the first one to spot a speaking a grammatically of incorrect sign characters no? yeah uh carla in huntington beach says that her cyclamen only has a few leaves oh no and she wonders if it's going dormant or is it just in trouble it depends carla indoors or outdoors right and if it's indoors, it only has a few leaves because they don't grow indoors. If it's outdoors and they're losing leaves, uh, it could be, you know, if they're done flowering, they do have a dormant cycle. So, but most of them are not going dormant in no. the cooler weather. Yeah. Hey, hey John, you, you gave me a funny response. Again, talking about stream <laughs> of consciousness and randomness. It was about three weeks ago when you gave me the, uh, the uh, Australian bottle tree. Uh-huh. And I sent you a picture, uh, transplanted, and you said, well, that was fast. Yeah. I couldn't wait to get it into that nice soil that Tiger gave me, that big, rich, dark, <laughs> moist yeah. soil. And you're right. It just sits there and does nothing, but I'm sure it's happy. <laughs> it hasn't died yet. No, but, yeah. but again. Just make sure you don't overwater. Yeah, I, you know what? It. I think I might have sprinkled a little bit of water one time because we talked about the environment they come from in Australia. Right. Basically, they, they're under abusive conditions, so they've learned to, to uh, survive. Right. Yeah. They don't grow in pots in the wild, though, so <laughs> yeah. they need a or little more water in a pot. Premium soil right. mixes. Or premium soil mixes is correct. But, but yeah. I, it's, I, it, I, it's in the patio, but it seems out of place. I'm trying to find a place that would really accentuate the way it looks in its beauty. I mean, it's fine. It just seems like yeah. you need to be someplace else. Yeah, <laughs> that's something they use as, I, I never realized it, but they make good house plants or even bonsai in colder parts of the country. Yeah. Now, if I brought that in the house for a period of time, how would it do? It should do all right. Yeah, as long as it gets a lot of light. Yeah. If it's a dark it, room, it will not do well. Right, right. I think right. that's your trouble. I don't, I don't you you have that covered yep. living room. I think that's your probably brightest room. And, and that's not all that bright. No. And now this time of the year now, what happens, the sun 
you know, that whole summer solstice spring thing we talked about all the time. Now I will be getting, I'll be getting more light in the patio now, but in the wintertime, it's a challenge. Yeah. I'm out there every day going, you guys okay? You okay? <laughs> Hang in there. The sun's going to come back in about three, four months. The Hang whole, in there. The whole moon and the planet that whole moon, and the sun the whole earth rotation. Ast- astrological night, day. <laughs> just, just causing my plants all kinds of havoc. Carla says that her cyclamen are outdoors, but again, we need to know, Carla, in the ground or in pots? Yeah. I think I think you mentioned it when we were talking about cyclamens the first time too. Is that most people overwater them, right. and that's the biggest challenge. Is they overwater them, especially in pots, um, because you know a lot of potting soils are designed to retain moisture, and cyclamens can get overwatered very easily. The other thing to remember about cyclamen is the after they're done blooming, they go to seed. Really. They, uh, have a <coughs> excuse me a little uh, seed head on the end of where the bloom was and if you notice it points down and actually goes down into the ground oh and never almost that. like a peanut yeah uh, but if you keep those pulled out rather than letting them do that they will bloom more like deadheading yeah it's okay exactly Perfect. what it is yeah. we've got about um, eh, just under a minute I guess we could go to a break now because when we come back, our final segment, Tiger, you want to yeah. do a little tour here yeah. of our surrounding area, right? I figured I'd just grab the camera for a second okay. and show people where we're sitting and what else is around us. Because, I mean, obviously being here in the nursery, sure. it's fun to see what's happening. Okay, so do stay with us. So one more segment coming up uh, as we enjoy this live remote coming to you, San Diego, California, Mission Hills Nursery, established way back in 1910. John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, I'm Brian Main. Do stay with us. Again, BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live, one more segment on your weekend. All right, here we are, final segment. Those on BizTalk Radio, this is last week's show. We're sorry you, you couldn't really see where we are, but again, as I mentioned, go to our Facebook page every Saturday, Garden America Radio Show, to watch us live. Okay, that said, a couple of questions, and Tiger does want to do the Roman camera, so let's get to finish up Carla, I guess, uh, John. Well, Carla said her cyclamen was in a pot, okay. uh, which would indicate to me uh, more why it's going dormant. They, they do need regular watering in a pot, and when they're blooming, they need to be fed. So either use a water-soluble fertilizer or uh, the Osmocote, again, would be perfect, and then you don't have to worry about it. Okay. But don't let them go too dry in a pot because uh, in nature that single signals to cyclamen, you know, the dry season's coming up and it's time to go dormant. Okay. All right. Um, so and what then, do you think? Huh? Oh, the other one was Kim, and she was just mentioning about her um, club that she belongs to and the fundraiser they do for their um, – I think it's like a garden tour. I don't know if you see that there, John. Oh, do you need to garden, take your mic or is the, no, the mic on the camera going to work? No, you guys will just have to we'll talk. Just, we'll just do the play-by-play? Okay. So Tiger's getting it from the chair. He's to his right now. He's going to make a left and go behind the camera. His right, your left. Yeah, his right, my left. Don't forget about that. Exactly. And a hush falls over the crowd. Okay. <laughs> Stepping up to the tee. Looks like a par five. What are so you going to do when you get home? Uh, we have to get ready to go see our financial advisor. Oh. And then go grocery I shopping. I wondered what you were going to do with all those extra funds. Yeah. <laughs> You've got so many business endeavors. Oh, boy. So there is a uh, another look at the... Uh, the grounds here at Mission Hills Nursery. Now he's, uh, Tiger is pointing to a drought tolerance section that's mostly succulents yes. and a few California natives, uh, but but mostly succulents and great choice right now. Yeah. And it's a good time to get them into the ground. And if you do live in San Diego, I hope we've, we've teased you enough to want to come down here and maybe make a, a purchase or two as a tiger continues to uh, you know, and show us our surroundings. I'm making a purchase or two, and I didn't even have to be teased. Well, I teased you before, but it was for a different reason. <laughs> so yeah, now, very nice. Well, there's a butterfly right there. We had a, qu- a butterfly question early in the show. Was it a monarch? I it looked to me like a cabbage moth. <laughs> it was orange. 
Oh, could have been. So it could have been, yeah. yeah. It was a smaller one, though. He's right over there, John. See? Fluttering, and he just uh, lit on a little uh, branch. Can you go grab it? It just is a monarch. It is. A, it, it is. All right, Rick, there's yes. the answer to your questions. There are monarchs in the nursery. The first one we spotted. Oh, John, there's an ant. So, <laughs> yes, uh, I think that was Tim in Long Beach. We right do have next ants to here. it is an uncle. Yeah. There's uh, also a good selection of Australian natives that uh, Tiger went by and shown. And those are some of the plants that I'm going to do. You know, you saw the monarch, didn't you? Yeah. You know, coming into bloom uh, this time of year uh, from their winter dormancy are the kangaroo paws. And kangaroo paws, I believe, are native of Australia. But I'm surprised at the newer hybrids and how much they bloom. I mean, and we saw earlier that there was a hummingbird that was right. going to the flowers. Tiger's putting one up to the camera right now. Uh, and these are one-gallon cans, and, you know, look at all the buds that are just coming out from a little tiny plant that eventually will be about three feet with dozens of bloom spikes on it. I'm glad this is our last segment, the, the camera. We're a bit tilted to, uh, well, looking at the uh, the screen, our left, maybe your right. Well, that helps if you're giving uh, slanted reports. Just just yeah, putting a slant on the information, John. Yeah, that's exactly right. we got about three minutes to go here. I think we're caught up on most of the questions. Uh, again, we are back in studio next week. But, you know, we, we always talk about how fast the show goes. But I'll tell you what, even faster out here in this environment, being outside, this is just fantastic. You know, our uh, buddy Rick has been uh, listening to us from Monrovia to uh, Oregon and now to to Idaho. Yeah, he's followed us. I guess we followed him. Right. But his question now is what succulents are cold hardy? Ooh. And it's interesting because the, he lives in Star, Idaho, which is uh, outside of Boise and often referred to as the banana belt. Mm -hmm. Because, well, it's going to be 10 degrees next week. <laughs> usually doesn't get that cold, and uh, they don't have a lot of snow cover. So there are plants you can grow. And, Rick, if you go to Amazon and look up, uh, trying to think of the name, I think it's the book is just called Cold Hardy Succulents. Mm. And it gives you a great selection that you can, I think there's a picture of a succulent in the snow on is the it? cover of the book. But it'll show you the ones that you can have. And, and there's some things like hens and chicks. Yeah, I was going to say, I was, hens and chick is a common Right. Cold hardy one. Not not all the varieties, but there are some. Right. The Semper Vivums or Semper Vivum, however you want to pronounce it, which is Latin, not Greek, Brian. You know, Semper is what? Always. Semp what that's the marine slogan, right? Right. And Semper Fi. And Semper Vivum fi. or Vivum is uh alive. alive. So always alive or evergreen. You know, we're sitting here for close to two hours and I had no idea that I was sitting next to a an octopus agave. A huge, in fact, several. It'll grab you. It will. <laughs> Do you know I got an agave that doesn't die after it blooms? Really? Yeah. Whoa. I never knew there I was. I didn't know there was one. Yeah. I, mine almost died before it bloomed because I wasn't taking <laughs> care of it, but it's coming back now, and I'm kind of anxious to see how that the, the grows. The new term is allowing a plant to expire. I allowed it to expire. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not so much better than I killed it. Yeah. Huh. Right. Okay, Dying. we get we got about a minute, guys. So anything you want to wrap up and talk about, and then we'll no, we'll right. close the show. Uh, thank everybody for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank right. you for the questions. And Jimmy's going to be here Wednesday to get Malorganite. Is it here? I know it's on order. I will double check. And okay. I did see a sign yeah. out there that they're proud carriers of Malorganite. Yeah. And then um, yeah, if anybody's at the Huntington tomorrow, <laughs> shoot me a message on Facebook. Okay, so that's going to do it uh, for the entire crew. John Bagnasco, he's with us. Tiger Palafox, I'm Brian Maine. Thank you for tuning in to this live broadcast at Mission Hills Nursery here in San Diego. We're back in studio next week with a guest, I assume, Tiger? I think yes. we have a guest. Okay. So that's it. Have a safe rest of your weekend. Have a safe week. Uh, until next time and in between time, we'll see you next time right here on Garden America. Take care.